So power is the rate of energy transfer. We define it as P is equal to dW dt, where P is our power in watts, and watts is the same thing as joules per second. Um, dW here is referring to energy, and that is in units of joules. And dt here is referring to time in usually units of seconds. So if p is equal to dw over dt, then we can rearrange it by multiplying dt by both sides. And then we'll have essentially dw is equal to p dt. What we can do with this is we can integrate both sides. And we'll be left with w, so energy, is equal to the time integral from t1 to t2 of p, which is our power, which is function of time, so p of t times dt. So if power is in watts, or basically that is joules per second, and time is in seconds, then energy isn't going to be in units of joules because those seconds cancel out. Sometimes you also see power just written as watts instead of joules per second, or even kilowatts. Um, so a kilowatt would just be a thousand joules per second. And sometimes time, instead of being in seconds, it might be given in hours. Then in that case, then our energy would be in a unit called kilowatt hours. So if you're talking about the amount of energy that like houses use or appliances and things, we might be preferring to use this type of measurement versus joules per second, which is a bit small. But yeah, um, we have an expression for power and that is power is equal to voltage times current. And we also have an expression for Ohm's law, which is voltage is equal to current times resistance. Now we can rearrange Ohm's law to have that current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. And then what we can do is we can plug in each of these substitutions into the power expression. So if we bring in this voltage and we replace it here, we're going to have power is equal to current times resistance times current. And that gives us power being equal to I squared R. And then we can also substitute in this current for this one. So we have P is equal to voltage times voltage over resistance. And that gives us a value which is V squared over R. So in addition to memorizing Ohm's law, which is very important for all of circuits, it's worth it to memorize these while you're studying circuits, P equals VI, P equals I squared R, and P equals V squared R, or just at least remember that you can make that substitution. And depending on which values you're given in the problem, you can often just quickly find out what the power is for any circuit element that's being dissipated or delivered. So let's draw a circuit here with one voltage source and one resistor. And let's find out how much power is basically absorbed by the resistor and generated by the battery. We can also say dissipated or delivered. Um, what we need to do first is we need to find the current. The current is going to flow clockwise like this. Basically, when we're talking about positive current, it likes to flow from the positive terminal to the negative using conventional flow notation. And we can find it using Ohm's law, so we just had V equals IR, and we had already rearranged that to I is equal to V over R. So it's the voltage, nine volts, over the resistance, which was three ohms. And that means that our current here is just going to be nine divided by three. It's going to be three amps. So for the power that's absorbed or dissipated by the resistor, we just have that expression that is P is equal to V I. And we have these variables, so we have the nine volts. This is the drop basically from here to here. And this is a nine volt drop because this whole wire, we can consider this a node. This is all nine volts higher than everything that's connected to the negative terminal of the battery, which is this entire wire that goes all the way over to this side as well. So we had nine volts times three amps. That gives us 27 watts. Now also, we put in a positive three amps here because using passive sign notation for 
circuits. We, uh, when we have positive current entering the positive side of an element and exiting through the negative, we consider it to be positive. When the current flows around and comes into the battery and out the other side, the current is flowing into the negative side and out the positive side, so we're going to refer to that as negative current. So for the voltage source, the power is equal to Vi, and we're going to have 9 volts times negative 3 amps, and it's going to be negative 27 watts. So for values of power that are greater than zero, or positive values, we call that dissipated power, or absorbed power. And for values of power that are negative, we call that delivered power, or generated power. So again, this one was for the resistor, and this one was for the voltage source. And if you add up all of the power that's dissipated and delivered in the entire circuit, it should sum to zero, because the net power of any given circuit is zero. So yeah, that's a quick introduction to power in circuits. Um, just know that power is the rate of energy transfer, and it's helpful to memorize some of these as we go forward, so you can just pull those out really quickly when you're analyzing the, you know, the, the dissipation or delivery of power in the circuit. All right, guys, I will see you in the next video, and we will talk about energy.